In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Now that we are done with the Easter season, Trinity Sunday, Corpus Christi, we go to the Sundays in ordinary time, starting with Sunday number 10. And we're back here at St. Anne's Church, and you might notice that we have the St. Anne motif set up for us. And the reason for that is because we are in the process of recording those 10 novena masses for the nine days in St. Anne's Day. So we've got a little bit of a decoration here ready to go for St. Anne's Day. And we are very blessed that you are going to participate with us, hopefully. So as we continue on these next few weeks, I'm going to be recording the masses, putting them online, and you can access all of them at our parish website and also on YouTube on our Border Town Parishes channel. As we gather for this 10th Sunday in the season of ordinary time, let us open our hearts to God's presence as we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. He then asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree which I have forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. The Lord God then said to the serpent, because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you will strike at his heel. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all of their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore we speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparisons, as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, but eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came home with his disciples and again the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they sent out to seize him, for they said he is out of his mind. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. If Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. No one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they said he has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers arrived standing outside. They sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, your mother and your brother and your sisters are outside asking for you. He said to them in reply, 
who are my mother and my brothers? Looking around at those seating in the circle, he said, here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we get ready for St. Anne's Day prior to my homily, I just was thankful that Tony Lama was able to deliver from Bethlehem, Israel to us a set of olivewood rosaries because of the war that's going on between Hamas and the Jewish armies. The Christians who are left in the country are not doing very well and they're suffering and they're just needing to make a living. So Tony had asked if there was any way that we could help him. So what we ended up doing is one of our parishioners here at St. Anne's uh, gave us a $600 gift so that we could buy 200 of these olive wood rosaries for the people of faith. What we're going to do is we are going to distribute these to the good souls at St. Anne's Day at each of our masses, and we're going to ask them to pray for the souls over in Israel. We have to have solidarity with others who are suffering around the world. You know and I know that no matter how bad we are suffering, and we are suffering in the United States, it pales in comparison to those whose lives physically are being threatened and are put on the line unjustly because of a war that does not involve them. So we want to pray for the Christians in Israel and throughout the world who are having a very difficult time. So very much for those who have a chance at home to pray with one of the rosaries that we've given in the past or the ones we are giving in the present, we ask you please to pray for those who cannot take care of themselves. As I was reflecting on our scripture readings today, it dawned on me that this is a size 14 shoe. This is a clodhopper. You know, if you put a red nose on me and some funny looking hair, this is like a clown shoe. It is so big. And as I was reading the scriptures today, it had dawned on me that in Key West, Florida, where I once visited, I was taught that if I was going to spend the night in Key West, Florida, it would be a good idea to take this shoe and place it upside down in Key West, Florida. I was also taught that chickens are not allowed to be killed in that particular area of the United States. There is actually a law in the city that prohibits the killing of chickens. Why would you put your shoe upside down and why would you allow chickens to run wherever they want in Key West, Florida, doing whatever they want, laying their eggs wherever they wanted uh, for the purpose of the people of that area? When I was doing mission work in Bolivia, I was actually helping the construction corps in Sucre, Bolivia, as well as Cochabamba and Santa Clara and up in La Paz, Bolivia, doing all kinds of missionary work. I was taught to place my shoes upside down. Why would you do that in that particular country? Why would I be told to do that in Mexico when I was going to sleep. Well, in Bolivia, I was taught that the walls, because they were not spackled, because there was no plaster on the walls, there were a lot of cracks in people's homes where these little bugs called chiggers would hide out. And at night, the chiggers, looking for food to sustain their families, would come out of the cracks and would go through the house and would take whatever crumbs that were available to feed their families, including inside people's shoes. Over in Key West, Florida, the scorpions, which came out at night while people were sleeping, trying to find food for their families, would crawl all over the place, including people's shoes. Now in Bolivia, we were taught that if we could teach people how to spackle their walls, plaster their walls, fix their walls, the chiggers would have no place to hide. Over in Key West, Florida, the easy way to solve that problem was let the chickens run wherever they wanted because the chickens would eat the scorpions. And then you would solve the problem of the scorpions. Regardless, 
You put your shoes upside down in those two areas. You put them upside down in Mexico so that you would be safe at night so when you put your shoes on, there wasn't going to be a little surprise inside your shoes. The problem is, you know, when God tells us to be alert, to be awake, we do not know when the thief comes at night. We don't know what happens at night, whether it be the chiggers or the scorpions or any kind of bad creatures. The fact is, we have to be alert constantly because there are all kinds of spirits that are going to affect us. And the only spirit that we seek is the Holy Spirit, is the spirit of consolation, is the spirit that bonds the Father and Son together and bonds us together. The fact is in the Gospel of Mark, the couple things that we do know is that the apostles are completely clueless as to who Jesus is, and we supposedly are not because we're reading the text after the fact. And the fact is a lot of people, even though we read the text and we know the text and we know who Jesus is, we still refuse to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the one who's gonna get us to the other side. We also realize that these spirits are coming after us constantly, not just in the first century. Notice every time a priest gets attacked or a cleric gets attacked or whatever it is, it's not just us. It happened to God, it'll happen to anyone. We could nail God to a cross, we can nail anyone to a cross. And fact is that people are not trustworthy of all kinds of people, including me. In my last parish, when I had to do what I did, I just, the only consolation I have at my last parish is when I tried to protect the kids, we saved a couple lives, one of the students. And the only consolation I have is maybe we protected the students at my school from having that happen to them. Maybe here, doing what we need to do, we save the parishes for, from getting uh, canceled, from getting shut down. In this last round of closures, we were able to save the two parishes under my care. And maybe that's the one consolation I do have. We save a couple kids, we save a couple parishes, we can stand in front of God and say, we did what we could in this generation to protect those who are the most in need of God's mercy. The fact is, that this devil, that this serpent, that these bad spirits are gonna be with us constantly. We also know in the Gospel of Mark that the only one that truly understands who Jesus is outside of a couple fleeting moments in the Gospel are those possessed by the evil spirit. The evil spirit knows who Jesus is. The evil spirit hides from Jesus and when Jesus comes to get them, they reveal who Jesus is. But the fact is we don't pay attention in today's age, we are so consumed with the ways of the world and consumed that we're right and everybody else is wrong sometimes that we don't see God in our midst. But the fact is, if we do see God in our midst, if we see the good that can happen when we follow God's way instead of human beings' way, all kinds of nice things take place. And then we save parishes, and then we save kids, and then we save people, and then ultimately, we save ourselves because we're doing what God is telling us to do. It ain't easy because those scorpions, those chiggers, those bad things, those serpents are always crawling about and they're gonna try to get into our shoes and everything else we have. So we learn, we learn to pray constantly, to love constantly, to put God first, to do good, avoid evil. If we do what God asks us to do, we may not get the front page headlines, but what we will do is we'll save a couple people along the way because we are allowing God to lead us and guide us to do what's right according to God. I try to do what I can. I ask you to do the same. We do it together, we end up saving these parishes. We do it together, God is with us. We may not win the war, we may not win the battle on earth, but it was never about the earth anyway. It was about getting to heaven by showing God that we care. In fact, most likely, doing God's will will reduce our lifetime on earth. But if we do it right, then we show God that we care and we can make a difference because it is God, it is the spirit working through us that makes the difference for the world. Jesus saw that, Jesus knew that, the spirit worked through Jesus to get rid of those bad things of the world, even though the world went after Jesus. 
Let's just have the same kind of strength to do the same, to allow the Spirit to work through us to make a difference for the people that we meet. This is our prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection from the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Committed to letting God lead us, for God to guide us, for God to give us salvation. Let us take a moment to offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. We pray that those who are called to lead, those who are called to allow Christ to work through them for the sake of others, may do so with a sincere heart and be led by the correct spirit. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are confused by the way they should lead, that God may give them strength to change their ways, to do good and avoid evil. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have received the Christian sacraments this spring, First Communion and Confirmation, even those who have received baptism, that God may allow this to be the beginning of their journey and not the end. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that God may bring the Holy Spirit into people's hearts so they may change their ways to find God despite the temptations of the world, despite the temptations of humanity. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, and those in need of God's loving care, especially their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be welcomed by God in his heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have asked for intentions this week, we're getting these cards from the Sodality of St. Anne. We've got all kinds of individuals who have asked for prayers that God may always answer them and be with them and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, continue to lead us, continue to guide us, to show us the way to eternal life through Christ our Lord, Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever, with humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. 
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look kindly upon our service, Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, and fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring into the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen.
Amen, Amen, Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of our Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lord of life, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May your healing work, Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to do what is right through Christ our Lord. Amen. So over at St. Pat's, we've been talking about reducing the debt and all the wonderful things people have done to try and get that parish back afloat. Here at St. Anne's, I think we have spent somewhere in the vicinity of $115,000 over the last year alone with uh, the upgrade of the flooring and the paint job inside the church. I believe that the golf outing is going to be used to help with the rail outside the church. Someone's already given us $10,000 for the purpose of upgrading that rail. We are now running into another problem, uh, something that I try to tell people before we talk about doing dessert, maybe we should talk about the meat and potatoes, eating our meal first. We have a significant problem that took place with our boilers in the downstairs of our church that we got resolved, luckily for us, 
that was under warranty, but now our air conditioning has gone out and two of our compressors are down, two of them are still working. Uh, thanks to John Cousins for coming over to inspect what we have. He ended up taking a couple pictures, found a bat inside one of the compressors, uh, got down to the vent system and however that worked out. But anyway, he's in the process of taking care of that. And we also have a sewage problem that we have to deal with with the front of the church. According to Do uh, Mayor David O'Connell, when they built the house, they simply tied the old lines of the previous house. There was no one's fault, it's just how they did it. They had two uh, and three houses built 100 years ago and to save money, each house was tied into their neighbor's sewer line to save money. So you have two or three homes tied together on one sewer line. That causes issues when one house plugs up the line and then all the houses can be plugged up. So what ended up happening is a couple of years ago during our St. Anne's Day, we ended up having a flood which caused a great deal of sewage and water to enter our rectory offices. We ended up getting insurance that helped us with that and then one of our parishioners gave us a $14,000 gift to help pay for that and then when insurance took care of the 14000 the parishioner told us to take the money and put it in the bank, which we were grateful to do. But now we have to resolve the sewage lines and John Cousins has an idea on how to resolve that. Between that and the air conditioning system, we're gonna be talking about a couple bucks. So whatever you can do to help us out would really be appreciated. We the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.